Well, I think we're almost there. Almost? Yeah. Just one piece that doesn't fit. Who, Jerry? It's me. Today, Jerry West, legendary player and later coach and GM of the Lakers franchise, is enjoying a new life as a fictionalized version of himself portrayed by Jason Clark in the HBO series Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty, a very loose dramatization of the championship years of the 1980s. From the looks of it, this has been a difficult process for many of the people portrayed as principal characters, seeing themselves not only unvarnished, but also distorted by the necessities of television programming, simplified, truncated, and over-dramatized. It seems that history isn't just written by the victors, but it also tends to be written by strangers, writers creating a memorable narrative out of actual events. Perhaps inevitably, feelings get hurt and people get defensive. These distorted interpretations, like funhouse mirror images of reality, are decidedly not how anyone sees themselves. They're probably really tough to accept. Apparently, Mr. West is so displeased about how he's been portrayed that he's thinking of pursuing legal action against the producers unless they apologize to him. I think that this is a rash and not particularly well thought through decision. From the outset, though, I must concede three major points. First, that it would be difficult for anyone to see themselves portrayed as a character by an actor on TV, probably devastating because no one sees anyone else objectively, so it always feels cruel when others take liberties with events as you remember them, or indeed, after 40 years, as you might misremember them. After all, years after the fact, two people may have two very different versions of the same reality that they both lived through. Seeing all your life dramatized on screen must be like suddenly encountering a cruel caricature come to life. It's you, but not really. Assalamu alaikum. Walaikum salam. Anything written and created without your control or consent, a fictionalized version of yourself, would tend to seem super foreign and made up and unfair. So let us concede here and now that virtually anyone might feel equally hard done by, as Mr. West apparently does. Second, we know because he wrote about it that Mr. West suffered from depression. From his perspective, it feels like the TV program is exploiting his personal struggles for the purpose of entertainment. He sees it as dismissive at best and truly opportunistic at worst. When the writers assumed the challenge of evoking depression on the screen, they certainly took liberties. The comedy sometimes comes off as really, really broad. Third, these sorts of films which examine cultural history are problematic precisely because history converted into popular entertainment is almost too tempting a target for writers struggling to create a narrative structure. Playing with and embellishing things becomes unavoidable. It would be difficult enough seeing yourself transported back in time, preparing to watch yourself make the same mistakes you made the first time around. But now, with the help of the series writers, a fictional version of you will now make a bunch of new, entirely fictional mistakes or greatly exaggerated old ones. Here's an example, the debate about whether the Lakers might select Sidney Moncrief instead of Irving Magic Johnson. Because what matters is this, it's not the truth. All right, we're picking Johnson. That's a big mistake. One way or the other, whether Mr. West saw it this way or not, we need to remember that evaluating college players is tough, and that believing that any one college star might be more valuable than another, even a game changer like Magic Johnson, is not a crime. Sidney Moncrief was a good player too, a great defensive player, and a five-time All-Star. Putting aside for a moment that Jerry West was and is a famous public figure, and thus not as able to avail himself of legal remedies quite as easily as others, because it's harder to libel a famous person, I nevertheless feel strongly that he might wish to reconsider his decision, and it's not because the case is unlikely to find much traction, or because of free speech, or that winning time is a particularly significant program, though I find it a fun and compelling fiction as far as it goes. No, my reasons are different, and I will enumerate them here, but generally they are more related to the show itself, thematically and otherwise, in essence how Mr. West is presented to the viewer. It might not be as bad as he initially thought, so here's why he should reconsider. It is a fact that most TV viewers today are conditioned to read or watch shows like HBO's Winning Time in a particular way, usually with an awareness that no one was actually recording most of the significant moments of a person's life. So we as viewers understand that what we are watching is a heavily embellished writer's conception of events. Frankly, what we watch each week on Winning Time is probably more like what might have happened or what the writers thought should or could have happened, and they're probably trying to squeeze as much drama out of that week's material as possible as we might suspect. So if two Lakers are fighting at practice, we know it might not be that particular practice, or that particular day, or those particular players who were fighting. Maybe those particular athletes hated one another, but never actually came to blows on the court, but the writers had them fight it out in any event. 
We as viewers get it. Winning time is an exaggeration of reality, an over-the-top comic book look at the Lakers of the 1980s, filled with strange digressions, like magic getting Korean fresh orange juice every morning, simple visual gags, there, come on. Bizarre fixations. This little door thing should be flush with the bar. Flush with the bar. Tangents about buses womanizing, his close relationship with his mother, and actual people reduced to their type only, like Magic Johnson being portrayed as promiscuous to the point of simultaneously being both comic and tragic. In one scene, Jerry Buss's daughter, Jeannie Buss, played by Hadley Robinson, imagines her father, played by John C. Riley, devouring fried chicken while he appears to be participating in something that looks sort of like an orgy with several young ladies. The image is so thoroughly grotesque, conflating the consumption of greasy fried food with sex with much younger women, it is physically repugnant. Though it's all in Jeannie's imagination, it nevertheless makes the point that Dr. Buss's hedonistic lifestyle had a traumatizing effect on his daughter when she was a child. Winning time creates something like a phantasmagoria, in which life is presented through a grotesque, absurd, disturbing kaleidoscope. Frequently, Winning time is like climbing inside a stranger's nightmares, as unfamiliar and unsettling as it is fascinating and revealing. It seems to me that demanding retractions is silly at this stage, sort of juvenile, a very 1980s pre-internet solution in a way, since it does nothing to either erase what we saw or either liked or disliked about winning time, which, let's face it, is a show that's way more symbolic than literal. Retractions change nothing. I was taught that forced apologies aren't particularly worthwhile, whereas an actual apology, a heartfelt one, well, that's something else entirely. Sadly, we don't get to hear too many of those in our lifetime. Forced ones, through court orders, don't make up for this dearth of actual mea culpas. In any event, the Jerry West presented in Winning Time, this much younger man, in fact, four decades younger than Mr. West as he exists today, this guy was a really different person, probably, so we understand that seeing yourself portrayed decades younger and full of misdirected energy and truly unfortunate ideas is pretty tough Go to take. Boat. He's too flashy to play second fiddle, Kareem, and that's reason number fucking two. Hold on now. Is there a third reason? He smiles too much. One of Mr. West's objections to the HBO program is that he's portrayed as being temperamental and prone to angry outbursts. This describes virtually every basketball coach that has ever lived. He is also upset for having been portrayed as undergoing radical shifts in mood. Him and every other person I've ever met. West is especially disturbed that his character employs foul language. What is it? What happened? What happened? Billy tied it up. No! Fuck! Today, this probably doesn't rise to the level of libel any longer. Frankly speaking, it's hard to imagine anyone actually caring whether or not fictional Jerry West drops the F-bomb a few times. People get that this Jerry West isn't the 2022 Jerry West, an older, subdued, dignified man. For the record, the producers are not alleging that West way back when was either violent toward other people or irresponsible or even a danger to himself. He seems like a guy who has a few anger issues, yes, like so many other sports executives or management people. In the end, there's libel, and then there's libel. Winning Time shows West as continuously cursing his fate and then beating up an NBA Finals MVP trophy because he won it in the course of a seven-game series loss to the Boston Celtics in 1969. What did it ever do to you? The actual smashing of the trophy is irrelevant, but the reason for West's ill-treatment of it are at least understandable. West wanted to win, and the trophy, a booby prize for coming up short while playing spectacularly, somehow feels like an insult. In the end, he wants to win championship banners for the Lakers, not consolation trophies, which amount to participation awards for being a great competitor. The reason he beats up the trophy is that it is a symbol for personal and professional futility. Despite world-class talent, he is not viewed as a champion like the Celtics' legendary center Bill Russell. No NBA star wants to be the MVP from the losing team. It's worth mentioning that viewers of Winning Time are reminded, hit over the head actually, with the idea that this is a fictional version of events. For example, could the real Jerry Buss stop time and walk about the form, breaking the fourth wall, taking the viewers into his confidence if this were some kind of a documentary on the history of basketball? The point here is that the show employs a wide variety of techniques to show us, or warn us really, that this is a fiction. For example, there is nearly constant editorializing in the form of retrospective information, like informing the viewer that Spencer Haywood's wife, Iman, is the future spouse of David Bowie, or that Magic Johnson left billions on the table by spurning the deal proposed by Phil Knight from Nike, or the use of fun, upbeat animation. 
or by having characters imagining the TV set is talking directly to them. You shanty Irish New York cocksucker, fuck you. You first. Or by presenting Jerry West's Hall of Fame trophy as having a mind of its own. Unlike you, you miserable fucking prick. You didn't even know how to be happy even when we fucking won. In all likelihood, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, played by Solomon Hughes, never told the child actor from Airplane to fuck off. After all, Kareem is a spiritual and deeply religious man. HBO's winning time is so over the top that at one point we have to be told, using a title card, that a deeply racist joke delivered by comedian Milton Berle at the 1980 All-Star Game in Landover, Maryland actually occurred. The fact that they have to inform viewers when something is real is an indicator of how much of a hyperbolic caricature the show devolves into. It is as good as admitting that much of the rest of the show has taken extreme liberties with the truth. Some of Winning Time is devoted to illustrating the state of American life at that moment, with Larry Bird, played by Sean Patrick Small, representing blue-collar, down-to-earth, good old boys, and Magic, played by Quincy Isaiah, characterized by his extraordinary athletic talent and skill at improvising ways to win games. And yes, his race tends to be how the media defines him. The producers of Winning Time wanted to set the stage for their program to show how America was experiencing the Lakers-Celtic rivalry, despite the fact that not everyone saw it exactly that way, so this too might be called a distortion or at least an exaggeration of reality. It wasn't quite this simple, but it is for the purposes of the HBO program. For so much of what transpires in Winning Time, there isn't really much way of knowing whether it's fact-based. We have to simply take their word for that, in a way, but some of it is common sense, like Magic was a kid and he preferred cheeseburgers to sand down. Previous Lakers owner, Jack Kent Cook is shown to be inflexible, intolerant, egomaniacal, and out of touch. His decision to serve sand dab to Magic Johnson and his father tells us all we need to know. He's trying to impress, overwhelm, and intimidate his guests, whom he believes aren't his equals. He seeks to chisel down the size of the contract that he will offer Magic. Jack Kent Cook, played by Michael O'Keefe, does not care that Magic only wants a burger. Tony. Can you please get me a burger, get this man a burger, and get this young man right here a burger with cheese and all that? Yeah. Though the scene may not be literal, it reveals the essence of the man Jack Kent Cook was reputed to be, and in a sense it reveals Jerry Buss's character as well, smoothing things over and trying to make people feel at ease. Jack Kent Cook is the opposite, insisting on calling Kareem by his given name, Luel Cinder, not his Muslim name. This is his way of disrespecting Kareem and showing how little he really thinks of his players. Look here, boy. Four hundred thousand is our final offer. <clears throat> In contrast to Jack Kent Cook, the fictional Jerry West character is actually surprisingly sympathetic. Despite having had a brilliant career, he's driven to distraction by being so close to winning without actually being able to experience it. He loses in the NBA Finals eight times and feels fury at the fates which invariably consign his teams to runner-up status. He dreams of winning many championships, but instead manages only one. At times his reactions are so hilariously over the top that he evokes sympathy from the viewer. How would we feel if we were forced to endure what he has? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a shit coach! West is emotional, even crazy about winning, yes, but he seems so open, so frustrated, so flawed, and so completely human that we cannot help being drawn into his world. We're not repelled by him. In the course of winning time, we also see that West can be readily adaptable when he needs to be. When seeking out a new coach for the team, for example, West realizes they ought to hire Jack McKinney, a seemingly innocuous assistant coach with the Portland Trailblazers, who's actually a brilliant tactician of the game, whereas Dr. Buss favors a big-name hire, like famed UNLV coach Jerry Tarkanian, whom Buss figures will help him sell more tickets. At first, West can't see McKinney, played by Tracy Letts, as head coach material, but after doing his due diligence, West becomes a McKinney supporter. This reveals his character as being flexible and open to change. In short, West is a great leader. He's there to facilitate winning, and he realizes that McKinney might be just the guy to do that. I saw the progression, Bill. This guy McKinney is a fucking idiot savant. As to West's personal battle with depression, it's presented inoffensively. No doubt everyone identifies with frustration and anger, and in a way it makes him instantly sympathetic and identifiable since we're all sad from time to time. In a bar after the 1972 Laker Championship, West is indistinguishable from the mourners at a wake, which is also taking place there. West comes across as a tortured man. But I can't get you to where you want to go! His self-loathing, which he demonstrates when he resigns, seems understandable. The team didn't win with him as coach, so he'll let someone else try instead. This is admirable. 
However, it leads us to a worrying phenomenon that deserves at least a brief mention here, which I cynically refer to as the basket of shit philosophy. It is the basic idea, popular in our society, that something, anything really, is inherently better than nothing. Hence, even a basket of, well, feces would be better than no basket. Of course, this is absurd, but many people mistakenly subscribe to it in essence or unconsciously in any event. The wise man knows that sometimes nothing is superior to something. In the case of winning time, the philosophy means that having an elite job, say coach of the Lakers, is inherently better than not having that said job. And you should just hang on to it at any price, even if the team never wins and you cannot find a way to motivate the players. Mr. West is apparently wired up quite differently. He wants to win, and if the only way to get there from here is to step aside and let someone else lead, then he will step aside. Some people today might not totally get this, but it's an uncommon approach to problem solving to ever say that you yourself are in fact the problem, and that your removal is the solution. I think the viewers get the point being made that West's obsession was with getting the job done. It also raises the distinct possibility that being depressed over not winning as a player made West a much stronger GM of the Lakers when the time came. He won five championships while doing that particular job. Somehow there's something utterly compelling about the isolated, sad leader who cannot rejoice in a championship, let alone anything else. He's not the man who jumps around after winning a ball game. This man is deeply frustrated. He sees the game and the championship as empty, not worth as much as the work itself, teamwork, trust, having the long view throughout the long season. To West, doing the job well is the thing, not all the accoutrements of power and success. His heart is pure. Sometimes it's important to take past history into account. When Paul Simon wrote the song Mrs. Robinson in 1968, Joe DiMaggio, then retired from baseball for 17 years, was reputed to be displeased, though he did not take legal action. The line, where have you gone, Joe DiMaggio, which he did not appreciate at the time, since he felt he hadn't actually gone anywhere, was not slander, but instead a chance at immortality in a Paul Simon song. God forbid the worst thing that ever happens to you is that you're important enough in the history of pro sport to be a character in an HBO show. The fictional Jerry West of winning time is probably how he's going to be remembered, like it or not, because most people will never have spent so much as a nanosecond with the real Jerry West, but they will spend considerable time with Jason Clark's interpretation of him while watching the show. Somehow, fictional Jerry West seems charismatic and not such a bad guy, really. It's definitely a perverse way of looking at things, but no one comes off looking too much better than Jerry West in the series. Everyone is kind of a parody. Jerry Buss, an entitled, creepy, womanizing, irresponsible buffoon with a truly horrifying comb-over. Jack Kent Cook, a dour, racist, penny-pinching weirdo. Larry Bird looks and acts a lot like a serial murderer. And Red Auerbach, an overconfident, ruthless, cigar-chomping, porcian Bulgarian. Compared to these guys, Mr. West comes off as unremarkable. After ten episodes of Winning Time, it seems clear that the fictional Jerry West of the television program, in all likelihood, would be way too cool than to ever launch a lawsuit about material that was simply not that damaging to his reputation. This man is a pragmatist. He knows only too well that he's a basketball guy first and foremost, not a surgeon performing a life-saving procedure or a diplomat negotiating a peace treaty. He's a guy who was great playing a sport and organizing teams. That's it. His reputation has been hurt by what? People learning he liked to win championships, that he hated losing, that he occasionally swore, that he was depressed sometimes, that his moods changed rapidly, that he wasn't always correct in player assessments, that he sometimes doubted himself or his own judgment, that he sometimes said stupid things or sabotaged his own enjoyment of life. He sounds like every other person. Nothing less, nothing more. I somehow doubt that they hand out damages for that. In the end, Mr. West learned what so many have before him, that we don't always get the biographer that we neither prefer or deserve. It is unfortunate, but it is true. So there you have it, my take on why Mr. West might reconsider his legal options vis-a-vis -vis the Winning Time program. I'd really like to know your thoughts, so please share them in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit like or subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you will return to watch other videos. I am, I sit there helpless watching these guys pissed to hell that they ain't me. And even worse, that I can't be them.